The record of any scientific investigation typically extends over many days, if not years. So whenever you open a lab book to write, the first thing you do is to add the date. Before any experiment can happen, you need to prepare. To get started, state the general aim of the experiment. In this example, we are planning to investigate acceleration by rolling a ball down a ramp. Begin to consider a simple picture of how you would achieve this aim. What are the key measurements, for example? Here we're going to be measuring acceleration as a function of the ramp angle. Next, start to think about how you will perform the measurements. In this example, we could start by downloading and testing out the tracking software that we'll need in advance of the experiment. This could reveal useful ideas to guide our thinking before the experiment happens. Many experiments are informed by some theoretical prediction. Start thinking about the implications of the theoretical model. What correlations would you expect to measure? Perform some quick sketches of graphs to help your thinking. This will help us consider whether we need to use a linear or nonlinear analysis method, for example. Perhaps we could use our experiment to measure the value of this constant g. Or perhaps we might think it more interesting to measure the rolling friction of the ball on the surface. Some experiments may contain more than one part. For example, rather than constant acceleration, we may also want to measure non-constant acceleration. So here we would start to think about how we would change the curvature of the ramp and what measurements we could extract from this experiment. Again, perform a quick sketch of the expected data to help your thinking. In this example, we could measure how long it takes for our ball to exit the ramp, the transit time. And we could measure this as a function of the curvature of the ramp. Do we expect a point where we have the quickest transit time for some specific curvature? And as we prepare, our curious mind will no doubt ask further questions. Is there an ideal curvature of a ramp that we could use? This is known as a brachistochrone. So our preparation leads to more questions. So follow this instinct, follow your curiosity with further research on the build-up to the experiment. When the day of your experiment arrives, record the title of your investigation and note who you're working with, such as the name of your lab partner. On completing your lab preparations, your experimental objectives should now be well defined. So take note of these. What is it you intend to get done in the lab today? You should have a clear idea of what data sets you need. Indeed, this may be the only opportunity to get this data. Hence, if you leave the lab without this data, the subsequent analysis may not be possible. So writing these lines serves to focus your attention at the beginning of the lab session. Also, before you begin, make a serious note on what health and safety risks you could encounter. Discuss with your lab partner and agree in advance on how you would minimize these risks. It's really important to be on the same page with the people you're working with in the lab. This again serves to focus your mind on the outset of the experiment. The practical work of an experiment begins with sourcing the equipment. You may already know which items are needed or you may initially try out different ideas using different equipment to solve the experimental problem. Either way, record which equipment you've ended up using. This again is for future reference. Also, take time to record the model numbers of the equipment and the resolution of any measurement devices. Building any experiment involves trial and error until the setup is optimized. Here again, make use of sketches to capture the details. Record the key actions taken in the setup. These details can be crucial later on ruling out potential problems or in replicating the work. Make certain to record the key parameters such as the sizes and positions of different components. 
such numbers may be needed later in the analysis. After setup is finalized, you are ready now to start taking data, that is, performing measurements. By this point, you will have solved any problems relating to the setup. Running the experiment brings its own challenges, however. For example, you may have discovered that releasing the ball in a reproducible way is needed, or that a diagnostic setting needs to be tweaked. Once you are ready and you've solved all these initial problems, you should start to record the data sets. And indeed, you will record the data sets multiple times in order to generate the statistics you need. The more repeats, the better you can estimate these statistical errors. Although time is limited, you may not be able to record as many data sets as you would like. In the case of data files, note in your lab book where these are saved, and then choose an useful file name convention that includes, in this case, the angle of the ramp and which repeat the data file corresponds to. Also, try to comment on the data while you record it. Is it good? Is it stable? Or does it appear a little unexpected or rubbish? If it is numerical data that you're recording, sketch the numerical data as a graph in order to check how the trend is developing. The main goal is to not leave the lab with rubbish data. In the case of recording video files, like in this example, it would be very wise to check that you can get useful data from these files. And indeed, you may want to ask your lab partner to check this while you run the experiment. Always expect to discover limitations as you run the experiment. Sometimes what can go wrong will go wrong. Hence, make explicit notes on any changes that occur and when they occur in the experiment. Before finishing the lab, do a final check of your notes. Have you forgotten anything that could be critical later on? You've left the lab, the experiment has been finished and dismantled and packed away. Next, we perform the data analysis. In this example, we have to first extract the positional and acceleration data from the videos. This may involve multiple steps and you may have to figure out how to do this process. So record any details of this process for future reference. In this example, we will have to record results from the analysis in a table. Like sketches, tables of data are another regular feature of lab books. Clear data is essential, so use a ruler to divide the columns and ensure that the column headers have units specified. Place the independent variable on the leftmost column and leave sufficient columns for the repeat measurements. You may also wish to show the mean and standard deviation and the error value for each row. For larger tables with many more columns, you can always rotate the page and work in landscape. Overwriting on top of data values is a big no-no in tables, as this introduces confusion. Also ensure that the data is written using the full precision of the measurements. So check how many decimal places you're using in each row and column. Record notes and results on any subsequent analysis of the data. A common example is a linear regression analysis. Here we are comparing our data with a linear theoretical model. Show the motivation of this analysis and record the results with the correct precision with the error values and valid units. An error analysis should also be shown in your records, especially if you use these regression values to calculate a new result. Here we are using the gradient value to determine a value for g. Hence, we can show that the relative error on the gradient will carry over to the error on the value of g. For low numbers of repeat measurements, we are restricted to using just one significant figure of precision on the error values. We then write the result to the same number of decimal places as this error value. Before wrapping up the analysis, write some brief comments on the results. Are they what you expected? This will really help your thought process later on as you consider how to interpret the results. The final section of our example lab book will be a summary of the results followed by our interpretation and then wrapped up with stating what could be improved in future. Typically some perspective is needed at this final stage, so give yourself time to consider the results before attempting your conclusions. 
In writing the summary, look at the data and identify any general trends. Here we can identify perhaps a surprising correspondence with acceleration and angle. We should also summarize the range of statistical and systematic errors. Here we can start to become aware of the relatively low statistical error in our example, but an unexpected possible systematic error. This summary will be a good starting point later on for discussions with peers and colleagues and when you go to write up your results in an article. Next, state the main analysis results. Again, ensure that any error values are present and these have been rounded to the correct precision. Some thinking and consideration is then required to interpret these key results. In this example, the result for G is slightly too large. As a scientist, you will naturally want to understand why this is the case. A good starting point is to consider the error value. Does this help to explain the discrepancy? Further thought can also be given to the theoretical model. Here we can check our assumptions. Have we overestimated some factor? Are there effects on the experiment which we have not considered in our model? This sort of evaluation takes time and careful consideration. Do not rush it. Hand wavy arguments should be avoided and are very easy to spot. The final part of your lab book entry is to offer some advice for future work. What would we change based on what we've learned? Was there work that you didn't have time to complete? State this for the record and it may help inspire future ideas and future experiments. A final step to take before completing your lab book entry is to number the pages. This can help in future to enable you to cross-reference pages in your lab book. Remember that keeping a lab book and the way you do it is up to you. There are no page limits. The key thing is to show preparation and use the experience of preparation to build confidence and indeed to start to enjoy the process of thinking about the science that you're studying. When you're carrying out the experiment, you are not writing prodigious amounts of notes in your lab book. These records are brief, to the point, and only take a few moments at a time. After you complete the lab experiment, you of course have more time and freedom to add more and more details and notes for the analysis and your summary and conclusions. Taking notes as a scientist is something you get better and better at doing the more you do it. So do not shy away from it. Your lab book is your friend, and it will provide a very useful resource for you in future when you want to go back and refer to how you performed different experiments or how you use different equipment or software.